I am making this video for the benefit of those who have not taken all of the 28 course videos in the Hidden Structures Online class, okay? So I think this will give you enough of an idea as to what's going on with these Bessie sequences that you'll be able to make use of them in intelligent and surprising ways. Okay, so let's do a quick review of uh, portions of that 28 video course. Okay, so first off, we have something called a two cycle. Now, uh, two cycles can come in with different cycle lengths, of course. Um, so here I'm going to stick with just a total of eight cards. Since that is what we're focused on right now, Bessie's sequences of length eight or of order eight. Okay. So the uh, quintessential example of a two cycle would be something like this. Uh, ace, two, three, four. And then if I stack these cards on top of those, it would be ace, two, three, four of a different suit. Okay. So that's called a two cycle. And it's a two cycle because there's a pattern that repeats twice. Okay. Now it ends up that uh, given a two cycle, there's a number of mixing routines and shuffles that can be performed that will not undermine the two cycle structure. So for example, a classic one is just a packet cut. Okay, so let's go ahead and just show you that really quickly. Um, so I have this little packet that we created. So if the spectator maybe cuts right there, what has that given us? Is it, quote, still a two cycle? Well, let's find out, okay? Is there a repeating pattern that occurs exactly twice? Well, there is. It's a three, four, ace, two, and that same pattern of card values repeats. Three, four, ace, two. Now we're not worried about the colors of the cards or the suits of the cards. At the moment, we're only focused on the values. So this is a perfectly fine two cycle involving the cards um, ace through four of one color and ace through four of another color, okay? And uh, another shuffle that you can perform is the Charlier shuffle. This is bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top. Uh, of any number, so maybe you push over two and then three from the bottom, maybe one from the top and then two from the bottom. That's equivalent to just cutting the cards once. Well, as just mentioned, cutting a cyclic packet like this, it will not undermine that characteristic of being cyclic. So for example, now the repeating pattern is two, three, four, ace, two, three, four, ace. Okay, so the thing to realize is that for each of these structure types that we're going to be looking at, there are certain uh, mixing routines um, and shuffles that will preserve or leave this structure type unharmed. Okay, so that's the important thing. And it is true that certain mixing procedures that you can use on two cycles will actually destroy these others. Okay, so be aware of that as well, okay? So there's a whole list of shuffling that can be done with the two cycle and not harm it, and that's talked about in the Hidden Structures online course. Now the other kind of structure studied in that course are called mirrored structures. So let's go ahead and just make up a mirrored packet. Go ahead and follow my little quintessential example here. So four, Three, two, one. Okay, so can you see in what sense this is a mirrored packet? Well, you can see from my numerals up here that the outermost values are the same. If you come in one, you get the same values, namely two. Come in one again, you get threes, and then you get fours, okay? So what this is, this is a physical model of that sequence there, okay? Now, mirrored packets such as this one has many, many ways of mixing it without harming that mirrored characteristic of the cards. Uh, one of the most powerful one is called the stay stack principle, which is something we talk about extensively in my videos. Uh, this is where 
for each divisor of the packet size, now we have eight cards here, so two divides into eight evenly. For each divisor of the packet size, you can deal the cards into that many piles and then stack the piles from left to right or right to left. And guess what? It won't harm the mirrored characteristic of that packet. So let's go ahead and we'll just stack left on right. Normally the spectator would decide that. Uh, why don't we do one or two more just to kind of, you know, mix things up a bit. This time we can stack right on left. That's just fine. Oh, in fact, since four is a divisor of eight, we can actually deal into uh, four piles if we wanted. With random stacking from left to right or right to left, uh, this can be decided by the spectator. That's fine. Now, believe it or not, the mirrored construction of this packet has not been in any way destroyed. Now, the cards are being permuted. Uh, they're being rearranged in some fashion, but it ends up that the rearrangement preserves this fundamental characteristic of mirrored structures. Namely, the outer cards here are of the same value. You come in one, same value, namely four, and then you get a couple of threes, and then in the very middle you get the two aces. So this is still mirrored, okay? So there's a whole bunch of shuffles and mixing routines that you can perform on mirrored constructions that won't harm them, okay? Um, now, I, I do want to point out that if you, <laughs> if you perform what I just showed you on a two-cycle, it destroys it, okay? It really, this one in particular. And in general, um, LR or dealing out the number of piles for a given divisor will make a mess of this. It won't be a two-cycle anymore, but it will preserve mirrored structures. So it has its own special group of shuffles that are safe to perform on this kind of arrangement, okay? Now the last one's called an AMP. Now AMP is an acronym. It stands for Adjacent Mirrored Pairs, okay? So you can kind of see what's going on here. What happens here is we have the cards in pairs. So maybe we'll put the two aces up front now, it's actually not important that the colors also be in the same order, so why don't we put them in a different order just to kind of emphasize that. So I have two aces, two twos, and now I need, oh, sorry about that. Now I need two threes, which I have, and then two fours. Okay, so that is, quote, an AMP, okay? So it's of this type here, okay? Now, it ends up that there's a lot of ways of mixing a packet that is so constructed without undermining the fundamental properties of this packet, okay? Um, so one is the Bessie 2-2. Two -two. Well, that's one that we've actually talked about um, in this Bessie sequence series. Um, the Bessie 2-2 two -two is where you go one, two from the top, one, two from the bottom, one, two from the top, one, two from the bottom. Now, if you just give that Oh, probably at 10 seconds of reflection, you'll realize, oh, wait, wait, we, we've kept the pairs together, which is absolutely true. But the pairs have been moved around. Do you see that? We used to have ace through four as pairs. Now we have three, two, four, ace, okay? So cards are being moved around. That's really important. But intrinsic structure that we want to preserve is still there. That's the key. Okay, so how did all of this lead me to these Bessie sequences? This uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 that we've been using in this series. Well, I just asked a fairly simple question. I thought, hmm, is it possible to find a sequence or a packet that is simultaneously a two cycle and is mirrored and is an AMP relative to some categorical relation, okay? Do such sequences exist? Because if they do, there's hope that we can perform any of these shuffles that are individually allowed for just those, just those and only those, 
stay stack here just for that and only that charlie a shuffle just for that and only that is there a way to come up with a packet structure that because it has this simultaneous two cycle mirrored and a and p structure you can put it through any and all shuffles that you apply to any one of these wouldn't that be amazing because if so we've essentially found uh, mathematically speaking, an indestructible sequence relative to the common shuffling routines used for small packet sizes. Okay, so that was my motivating idea. I thought, hmm, is there any way to come up with a sequence that is a two cycle and it's mirrored and it's AMP relative to, you know, certain categorical relations? Okay. So that got me thinking and exploring what is possible. So after considerable thought and exploration, I discovered that dichotomous elements, uh, these are elements that naturally break into two possibilities, yes, no, on, off, up, down, red, black, zero, one, I found that these dichotomous elements are the best ones to initially use to build such sequences. This led me to the design of what I call CMA sequences. C stands for a two cycle, M stands for mirrored, and A stands for an AMP. Okay, so let me show you an example. So for example, the following is an SOO CMA sequence. Okay, so the dichotomous elements that we're looking at here are zeros and ones. Okay, so in some sense, we're going to view all of the zeros as, quote, equivalent to each other, even though they are physically different. And that's not too hard to see because of course, if we wanted zero to be a black card, let's say, zero is a black card. Now we're just focused on color. So these technically are all zeros because they're black in color. And then if red is one, we associate the color red with one, and then we ignore the values and the suits. We're just looking at the colors. Is it possible to arrange these cards focusing just on color so that it is a two cycle? and it's mirrored, and it's an AMP relative to some categorical relation, okay? So that is what I got thinking about, okay? So this particular sequence right here, which is just an alternating, if you want to think about this red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black, okay, so it's a fairly simple construction. It's technically an SOO. Okay, so what does the S stand for. So I'll put these up here and then maybe, so we're going to alternate. Now it's actually not important uh, that we alternate or that we have them in ascending order or anything like that. Um, I'm probably just OC, oop, <laughs> I'm OCD. So I need a, bl a black one now. Maybe I'll put that one there and then a red one and then a black and then a red one. Okay. So just focus on color. Black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. Okay. Now, what kind of, quote, structure does this sequence have relative to a two-cycle arrangement? Okay, so what's needed for a two-cycle arrangement? Okay, so what we have to check is this number right here. This needs to be of the same kind or possibly the opposite kind. It depends on what quality of the dichotomous elements we're focused on. So here I have an S. S stands for same, same value. So this is a two cycle relative to the same values in their respective positions. Well, what does that mean? That means that this first element here needs to be the same in value as this one. Okay, so this one right here, which is a one, needs to be of the same value as that one. Well, does that happen up here? 
Well, sure, because we have an uh, ace, and then if you move over four, maybe I'll put a little bit of a break there so you can see that, we get another black card. So these are of the same color. That's the key. They're of the same color. Now it ends up that they're black, and I suppose I assigned <laughs> zero to black and um, one to red. Uh, but as we'll see underneath the cards there, it doesn't matter if you switch all of your assignments for, you know, what's a zero and what's a one. Uh, but you do need to have a dichotomous characteristic in mind. So this is indeed a two cycle because look, so this element here needs to be the same as that one. Okay. And then this one over here needs to be the same as this one over here. So think, think about the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Because we needed the ones matching the twos, the threes, and the fours. Well, those are just kind of marking those positions to help us see uh, that that was a, a two cycle relative to card value. Um, but yeah, this will be a two cycle relative to uh, digit value of a zero or a one. Okay, so those two are the same. Come one over and one over, both zeros. Come one to the right, one to the right, they're both ones. Come one over to the right, one over to the right, they're both zeros. So we say that this is a two cycle relative to the digit values being the same. Okay? Now, what about it being mirrored? Okay, now you know what mirrored means. This is where you focus on the ends here. Okay? You look at the ends and you compare those and say, okay, how are they related? Well, look what happens here. Um, a black ace and a red ace. Well, black and red are opposite colors. Hence the O for opposite color. If you come in one, we get a red two and a black two. Well, those are of opposite color. Same thing here as you come one more in. Black three, red three, and then come all the way to the middle. Red four, black four. Okay, so this is a mirrored construction relative to uh, colors being of the opposite kind. Or back to our sequence here, the digits being of the other kind. Okay, and we can see that here because uh, focus, on, focus on this one. Now the elements that's quote mirrored, meaning it's like if you were looking in a mirror, what would you see? Everything gets flipped right across the center. So this would be related to that one relative to a mirrored relation. But look at the values, they're opposite. One, zero. Same thing here. Next element or digit zero, but if you come one in this way, you get a one, right? And they're also of opposite value. Okay, and the same thing with the one right there and the zero there, opposite value. And the very center ones are of opposite value. So technically, uh, this sequence up here is mirrored relative to opposite color value. Or here, opposite digit value, you know, zero versus a one. Okay, and then finally, why is this, why is this an A and P relative to the opposite color or opposite value? Well, here what you do is you just take things in pairs. You remember that? You just pair these together and look at them and go, hmm, are those the same value or different values? Well, they're different here. They're opposite values. Opposite, 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 okay? And so that's what we do to check for an A and P construction. You're, you're checking the top two, and then you move down to the next two as a block, next two, and final two. Okay? So we call this uh, really just alternating sequence of what black through red of eight cards an S O O CMA sequence. Okay? Now, uh, the question is. What kinds of shuffles will preserve the two-cycle nature, the mirrored nature, and the AMP nature of this particular sequence? Well, that's a very interesting question to explore. And there will be, as you can kind of see, there's going to be a total of eight possible CMA sequence types, right? Because in each position here, we have three positions, one for the 
you know, cyclic property, one for the mirrored property, one for the AMP property. The values that we can put in here will be uh, they're of the same color or same value or opposite color. Well, you have two choices in each of these three spots. So the fundamental counting principle would say the total number would be eight because it would be two times two times two, which is eight, okay? So this is just one of eight of them, okay? And each one of those will have, you know, kind of slightly different qualities, okay? Now, there is one, oh, by the way, I should point out too that using four zeros and four ones, and you can check this for yourself, S, S, S is not possible. So if you have four zeros and four ones, let me just move the cards here. If you have four zeros and four ones, and you're trying to, you know, try it out for yourself. See if you can create a sequence of eight objects where it's a two cycle relative to the same value, it's mirrored relative to the same value, and an AMP relative to the same value. You will not be able to do it with four zeros and four ones. It is impossible. So we would say that that's an impossible construction there. It doesn't exist, okay? Now the others do, and it ends up that the one that is a crown jewel among CMA sequences of order eight, and I should point that out, order eight, is the OOO sequence. And that is what I have called a Bessie sequence. And this sequence is just beyond belief relative to its ability to survive just about any small packet mixing procedure, systematic one, that's used today. I mean, this se sequence is unharmed by it. It's, like I said, it's almost indestructible, which is amazing. Okay, well, what does that mean? That means you can mix this in just random ways chosen by the spectator but yet you're still in possession of a tremendous amount of information. So if you've watched any of the videos in this little series, you know that. We can use this structure here to create countless card effects, okay? And I've created maybe 10, 12 of them so far, okay? So let's look at this one. Why is the Bessie, and I called it the Bessie sequence, because there's no name for it. Okay? There's no name for this exact sequence of eight objects. Okay? Now it is related to some other sequences with an infinite number of zeros and ones, uh, but no name or no real discussion is out there about the properties of this particular construction when it comes to mathematical card magic. There's nothing out there that I could find. So really everything I'm showing you here is completely original. And that's one of the reasons I called this uh, little playlist Absolute Math Card Magic. It's kind of a reference to Darren Brown's Absolute Magic, which is probably the most iconic book written on magic in history, by the way. Okay, so I kind of adopted his uh, hyperbole there <laughs> for this one. Uh, but I think it deserves it. It truly does deserve it. So let's look at it here. Okay, so why is this an OOO? Well, let's kind of put that behind us. So looking for two cycle structures. So what you're doing here is you're looking at the first elements in each little cycle. Is it true that they're of opposite value? They are. There's a one and a zero. If you come over one, you get a zero and a one. Those are of opposite value. A zero and a one again, opposite value, and then you get a one and a zero, okay? So this truly is a two cycle relative to the values and their respective positions being the opposite, being of the other kind, right? And the only kinds we're looking at are zeros or ones. Or if you like to think red and blacks, that would work just fine as well. Okay, so why is it mirrored relative to opposite value. Well, it's not too hard to check by what we did earlier. Here you're looking at the outer numbers and you're just comparing those. Are, are those of the same value or opposite value, of different values? Well, they're opposite, right? We're only focused on the zeros and ones. So those are opposite, come in one, 
a zero and one, those are opposite. Come in again, zero and one, opposite. One, zero, opposite, okay? So, so far, what we've verified is that it has these two characteristics. The final one is I claim that it's an AMP relative to opposite value as well, okay? So remember, for an AMP, you're looking at pairs, right? You're looking at pairs, and then you're asking the question, of what kind are those individual values or elements? Well, they're of opposite value. If we only have zeros and ones, these are of opposite value, opposite, opposite, opposite. So this truly is uh, an OOO CMA sequence. And it's the only one of its kind of order eight, except for its inversion. And the inversion will always be paired with the original sequence. So whatever characteristic this one has, switching zeros for ones and ones for zeros, it will be of that same kind, okay? So if you think back to all of the mixing that I've done and the various performances using Bessie sequences, um, many of them preserved exactly this. Like if this was a red, black, black, red, black, red, red, black. At the very end of a bunch of mixing, that might still be red, black, black, red, and so forth. Or it could be that it changed it to its inversion, where it starts with black and then a couple of reds and a black, okay? Now, either one of those will allow us to finish in precisely the way that I have finished in each and every one of those performances. So these are both equally good, equally valid, equally amazing. Okay, I do emphasize this is the only one with this structure of order eight. And so you might want to think about, hmm, are there CMA sequences that have the same amazing properties that this Bessie sequence has of different orders? Now it ends up the order will have to always be even. And with a little bit of reflection, you'll realize that that's the case uh, using zeros and ones. Um, but, you know, are there any for 10, a sequence of 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and so forth, okay? And so those are all things I've explored in great detail. And depending on interest in these Bessie sequences, I might talk about some of those higher order Bessie sequences and what you can actually do with them, okay? So I just want to check this off that we verified that as well. The, the thing to realize and, and I haven't really verified this in this video here because we're trying to keep it, you know, not too long, otherwise no one's gonna watch it. If you start with a red, black, black, red, black, red, red, black, little construction, and then you perform any and all of the shuffles that we've been using for these Bessie sequence performances, they will either exactly preserve that red, black, you know, this arrangement of the colors, or change it to its inversion. One of those two things is guaranteed to happen, okay? And the reality is I still haven't shown you all of the shuffles that actually preserve this. I mean, this, seem, this seems to be invariant under just about everything under the sun. Now, I do know it's not invariant under every small packet mixing procedure that sometimes is used, for example, and try this out, um, the under-down shuffle, okay? Now the down-under shuffle, that's one of our videos, it's called the Australian shuffle. It preserves this just fine. Down-under works great. But if that first card is put under and then the next one down on the table and then under-down, under-down, it destroys these, okay? So there's at least one um, I'm not sure how common it is, a fairly common mixing procedure uh, that will actually harm our special sequence. Uh, but just about everything else that I've come across will actually leave this unchanged or unharmed. It may convert it from one to the other or just leave it exactly the same, okay? Um, so I, I did want to point out there are limitations that I've discovered. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some others as well, but there's probably other mixing routines that also preserve this that I haven't even thought of or tried yet. So that's something you can explore.
Okay, so I wanted to essentially show you where I got this sequence from, how I arrived at it, and that was my rationale. Um, I really did want to find a sequence that essentially has all of the best qualities of a two cycle, a mirrored structure, and an AMP. Because individually, there's some great shuffles that can be done without harming a two cycle. The same thing for a mirrored, same thing for an AMP. But most of the time, if you start using shuffles that are fine here on the other two, it destroys them, okay? Well, that's where I got thinking, well, is there a sequence for which they are not destroyed? And that led me to the Bessie sequence, okay? So um, have fun with that. I thought I would at least give you a glimpse, a little bit of motivation as to, okay, where I got this from. And it is true that I've discovered after the fact that it's related to a famous infinite sequence um, that deals with fair sharing. So is it possible to be perfectly fair in how you share things uh, between two people, let's say, okay? Um, so that ends up um, as a, a, a greatly truncated version of that infinite sequence does give you this little sequence here. But there is no reason under heaven that this should have the properties that I've been sharing with you. There's no indication that there would be any connection with mathematical card magic, period, okay? So, um, so anyway, I gave it a name just to have a name out there uh, because otherwise, well, you have to have names for things, otherwise you can't make mention of things, right? Um, okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed that. So take a look at um, some of these uh, shuffles that indeed preserve or convert these uh, structure types among themselves, um, and just a taste of all of the different interesting and mind-blowing ways that you can exploit the invariance of these sequences, okay? And that's what I do in these videos dedicated to the Bessie sequences, okay? So take a look at those, have fun with those, and come up with your own routines. I mean, honestly, most of those I sat down, I was just about ready to hit record. I hadn't really thought through, okay, well, what example should I give? And so on the fly, I uh, just came up with something that I thought might be fun. So it's very possible that with a little bit of thought, you could come up with even more engaging examples of using, of taking advantage of this most remarkable sequence. So once again, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll take a look at some of the other videos on the Hidden Structures channel.